Hey, huh, hey, huh. Add it up till we got to the sum. Stayed in the rhythm, now we on the drum. Love and mentality, you see how we coming. Real talk on it, we keep it a hundred. Dreams, money can't buy, and that's all that we wanted. Wait, now we see what we needed. Putting that work till this mission completed. We feeling blessed, though we was depleted. Real life winners, we can't be defeated. Stay by our side like we on the drum line. Hey, know that things gon' be our sometimes. Hey, it's a new day, check the forecast. Hey, perfect day for the drum podcast. Thank you for listening. My name is Jawanza Harris. I am the creative strategist at Novator Agency, and you are listening to or watching the Drum Podcast, where we talk about everything advertisement and everything life. Um, first off, I'd like to start us off with a check-in. We got everybody in today. We are the guests today, and I'm just excited. I'm excited to be here, excited to be with my family. So um, here at Novator Agency, are a part of our culture is doing a check-in just to really see how everybody's feeling so that we can know how we can navigate throughout throughout our days. I'm feeling good. I'm happy to be here, happy to be with some family. Got on my sunglasses inside, feeling real cool and breezy. Um, the Rams won yesterday, so rep in LA, hard. Um, <laughs> so I feel amazing. Um, I like to popcorn the brief. I also feel amazing. We're recording on Valentine's Day, so lots of love. Um, yeah, I'm a popcorn to Dre. Um, feeling productive right now, working as we shoot. So, a popcorn to shot. I'm feeling great, as always. Popcorn, my dollar BP. <laughs> What's the word? What's the catch, y'all? So look, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it real. Look, you know, today today was a good morning for me, despite you know, you know. The obvious, but hey, I feel great. So we're gonna get it done, and I'm gonna pass it to my guy Strong. How are you feeling, Strong? Man, I'm feeling very cozy in between Colin and Bree right now. I feel warm. <laughs> um, I feel like it's gonna be a long hour, and I'm very comfortable. I'll pop one up. Bye. I'm feeling wonderful today. Um, I'm gonna pop one just to Colin. I feel sensational. Like I'm around all these individuals. I feel safe. Like can't nobody mess with me today. I got my crew Ain't with nobody me. nobody effing with my crew. <laughs> but yeah, y'all, like, I'm excited. Like, look, we're going to be into this conversation. Like, what are we what are talking about? So today, <laughs> <laughs> today we're talking about um, Not On My Resume. Not On My Resume is the title of today's podcast. And really what got us into this title was just to, um, a lot of times, we go to these interviews and they're asking us all these questions but they're asking us about our work experience, but that necessarily doesn't make up the, the sum of a person. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to really dive in deeper so that our audience, so that you guys can better know us and that we can kind of get to better know each other mm -hmm. by talking about the things that's not on our resume, that's not present, um, that a boss or a CEO may not ask us when, they, when they're hiring us, like, what's up? So um, yeah, the first question is, What's not on your resume that informs your perspective, your work, or your character? Mm. Gosh, like, I guess I could just say, like, in general, like, just my experience, like, growing up in my family, with my family. Uh, one, one, like, running joke that, like, goes on in my life, I'm always in a house that always has some issues, like, if it's not like the uh, heater going out, it's the refrigerator going out. Then when the refrigerator go out, the damn um, bathroom light won't turn on. Then the cable won't turn on. So <laughs> it's like, it really lends in a lot of stuff for me to, it really just taught me how to adjust mm -hmm. at an early age because- We gotta switch houses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean like, man, like shoot, it, 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 gets, it gets tiring, right? Like, you know, it's, but it just, good for that character development because mm -hmm. you know your home is your safe haven that's where you should feel you know you're most safe and you can let your guard down so just dealing with all those things you just see the unfortunates mm -hmm. of life and just how you can evolve with it like you know you're gonna pay somebody to fix this or is it something that you can probably fix by yourself like i i never would have thought that um putting together uh, like ceiling fans 
or you know, well, painting is easy. Well, to me, painting is easy. But and just doing like little carpentry stuff around the house, just by looking at YouTube videos, I wouldn't have thought that I would be able to just do that at a young age. But shoot, when you 14, you gotta make some stuff shape. Like, you know, you got you gotta make it work. So that's with me something that I don't have on my resume because I can't just put on there like. My house always be, you know, breaking down, so I gotta do stuff to it. So. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, like, pers that's personally, you know, my experience. What about y'all? Should I popcorn somebody or? I think you just flow, because you low key like a carpenter. <laughs> so, but you don't want to put that hey. on your resume. Like, here, hey, call you know, in carpenter. That's call the, the, call yeah, that's in the, the carpenter. That's the C word for the yeah. day. That's yeah. the C word of the day. About hey. you, about yours truly. <laughs> so, with that being said, what, what's not on your resume that? All right, yeah, so going back to that, <laughs> so what's not on my resume that I feel like, you know, I never really discuss or uh, give myself even props about is like having to go through speech therapy when I was younger. From the ages from like five to seven, I had a hard time like really um, communicating with everybody, letting them know how I really felt, what was, you know, what I wanted, you know, it was just a hard time for me to adjust. And just the amount of time and effort that I put in along with the staff that helped me, you know, get to where I am today, I felt I felt like, you know, that's something that I really should put on there. I just never did it. Because it, you know, just that even small step of like trying to improve myself in order to get to the outcome of now being here with you guys, you know, that's amazing. And simply put, I mean that's something that everybody, you know, has some little uh obstacles that they have to go through. So I feel like we should take more pride into that and honestly just, you know, put it out there like, yeah. This is what helped me get to this moment to talk to you right here, right now, and ready to work. So that's something I wish I, you know, needed to put in my resume. And I wouldn't even expect that from you, man, because like you, you become that like Ted Lasso with the pep talk. <laughs> yeah. you know, I ain't no Ted Lasso. Like, no, you definitely on. Ted Lasso. <laughs> like, you definitely Ted Lasso. I'm BP. 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 Sir, you already know. Yes. All right, so um, I'm gonna pass it over to. Papa, anything on your resume? <laughs> I was a little um, having trouble a little bit, but I think the resume really doesn't capture how multifaceted someone really is in a sense. I think they just see it at face value as like the things that you did, but what did you really like overcome to get to these different spots? I think like Mona being like a first generation immigrant household, I mean, it's a running joke, like, at five, we were opening mail for our parents, like, yeah, that's what the government said. <laughs> but, um, and just, like, having younger siblings that you kind of want to show that anything is possible, just being that overachiever, like, eldest daughter type thing, I think a lot of that is not really in my resume. So, yeah, I think that's what I have to say for that one. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. Uh, Strauss? I had to say, you know, uh, going on the topic of family, um, I have this cousin, you know, uh, since we were younger, he was always like someone I just wanted to compete with. Um, he brought the like ferociousness out of me. It was just like, you know, he was, and he's almost like, you know, my big brother. Um, so that's not my resume of, of him, like pushing me to compete when we were younger. You know, we played like more than like 300 basketball games in our backyard. Um, and I probably only won maybe like 10 times. Um, and then we played wiffle ball too, and I probably only won maybe like, you know, 10 times. Um, but him just like beating me and then keep pushing like, all right, let me get another game. Um, for sure, that's not my resume is like the competitiveness of like uh, not wanting to take an L and just like wanting to keep going and like, you know, uh, get right back up and uh, try. Or even if I do take an L, it's like, all right, I'm going to take another sh uh, shot at it. But I got that from like being in the backyard every day, playing basketball, uh, running routes with them, um, even like, you know, playing GameCube and, uh, you know, losing at Mario Kart, but then thinking like, all right, let me switch the car real quick and I could beat him on the next one. Um, but it's just that competitiveness of like playing, whether it was games, anything sports related, um, that, you know, helped shape who I am for sure. I'm on, I'm on popcorn to Brie. Um, I said I was like not going to be a woman that talks about motherhood, but if I'm really talking about the thing that shaped me most, I would have to say that, you know, the path that I took to motherhood, um, being so young, kind of feeling derailed, kind of feeling pushed completely off of what I thought I wanted to do or who I thought I would be, um, definitely is probably the most impactful thing um, 
that happened in my life. You know, I picked a career that was gonna give me bread. I picked a career that was gonna make sure um, I could get paid and I could parent and afford my kid all the opportunities that I felt like he deserved it. So, um, single mom stand up. <laughs> <laughs> we out here. If I could, if I can do it, <laughs> anybody can. Like it's really gonna be alright. I never held a child in my life until I held my own child. Mm -hmm. Like I never babysat. I'm the youngest. I'm the only. So yeah, like if I can do it, anybody can. switch and so yeah. I feel like certain qualities you might not have even known you had inside of you just automatically <laughs> activate once that parenthood thing comes into play I, know what mean. I just became a father about eight months ago and as a man I'm completely different and that largely affects how I carry myself every day so it's a lot of things that I questioned I was so curious growing up always trying to find out answers on my own. And I don't never want my son to have to figure out anything on his own, for real. I want him to always have the notion to be like, I'd call pops. Dad'll help me with this. Dad'll help me figure this out with anything and everything, you know? So I think I'm leading my life in a way to try and find those answers for my son. I can't stop myself from doing anything. There's no limits, no boundaries. Like I gotta go and pursue whatever it is so that I have these answers on deck for my son when it's time. That's, that's real. That's real. Yeah, that's real good. Something that's um, not on my resume that um, I guess shows up in my work, but a lot of people always say, Juwan, you cool under pressure. Like you chill under pressure. You don't really trip or you don't really like freak out. Um, I'm from South Central, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's what I always say, like, I'm a blessing from South Central because uh, in a lot of ways, I've been in different situations where they, um, where it was just, it was crazy. But you really can't, you really can't, like my brother, um, he got shot, like, 2017. And I was on my way to get on the, um, on the freeway, and then we got a phone call, so we, we go back to the house. And I, I'm literally pulling him out of the car with blood all over him. And at this point, I'm about to cry. But then, like, I just hear a voice say, like, don't cry. Everything's going to be okay. So then I just start saying, hey, do you have a towel? Like, and then, like, somebody grabbed me a towel. I wrapped the towel around his leg. No tears. Like, holding it down, calling the ambulance. And he's still alive to this day and walking and everything else and playing football and stuff. So... To me, it's just like different situations or experiences that I've had when I'm in a meeting and something, I'm like, my brother is not shot. So this is not as serious <laughs> as yeah. what has happened to me before in life. Like, you know, like when I'm starting to feel like a whole lot of anxiety or I'm starting to feel like, yo, like, and I'll just be like, yo, but like, gee, Jelani's not shot right now. Like, <laughs> so like life is like way better than this. So like, I don't know. That's something that's not on my resume. Of course, you don't want to lead into a oh, <laughs> into an interview saying, you know, my brother got shot, bro. <laughs> hey, that's why you should give me a shot. That's the reality. It's simply that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, my brother, he got shot. Yeah. He was but, so traumatized. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's supposed to hire somebody yeah. to get that kind yeah. of person. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So, that, I mean, that's exactly. I felt like I've been through some types of adversity that's really prepared me for different situations that I'm like, yo, this is not as bad as some other situations that I've been through. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but that's, that's something that's not on my resume. That's perspective. You know, um, for me, I could definitely go into a detailed story or two about that, but I would really go towards the fact of the family outside of my family. So, uh, environment.
it's things about it that aren't necessarily new. It's just that we're in a particular mm -hmm. advertising, you know, lane and stuff like that. So we got to apply those things from our life, you know, and be able to use it in this particular field. So like for me, being able to adjust to a person or being able to uh, be my full self in a way that is not a condescending of the next person or, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like being very weary mm -hmm. uh, of my surroundings and that has always been something that I've always been, you know, been able to do. It's just when you're in certain rooms, you know, you read it differently. You know, I, it's not me back home and stuff um, and being like, yeah, I gotta look left and right because this guy might have something on him. Yeah. He might be trying to get over on me or something like that. But I gotta look left and right. I gotta look left and right because this person may actually be trying to get over on me in a professional way. Yeah. And this person right here might actually be looking out for me. Mm -hmm. If you come from that environment, it's just like being able to adjust to different uh, personalities, different people, because we all human. When you said when you said that, I just made me think about like what um what are some moments where you like because we're all in these different positions now. Like all of us are playing these different roles. What are some moments that um that you had before that you think prepared you for the role that you are in now? I can go like for example like the creative strategist. I was swearing that I wasn't a creative strategist, <laughs> but when I start looking back, I'm like, yo, you were strategizing here. Like when I was in college, I um. People used to come to me about their SGA campaigns because like I used to come up with the like the best campaigns and plus because I watched Scandal. So I just knew that I was like, I was like, oh you got an issue, we're gonna fix it this way. Like, you know what I'm saying? So creatively I would come, I would strategize and come up with these campaigns and come up with these uh, these interactions and these moments that people can have throughout the week so that uh, people can better get to know like you know others and stuff like that so I know that's something that I've used like on every every step of the way when other people want to ask me could you help me come up with this campaign for my, my music release and stuff like that I was just like I didn't know that all of those things were creative strategy um so that's something that like I'm really like holding on to I was shooting in the gym and I didn't even know it <laughs> And um, yeah, now I'm here, creative strategist. What was something that like that for y'all? I definitely didn't realize that business analysts and brand managers were the same roles in different industries, basically. Mm -hmm. um, so sitting as a liaison between IT and then developers, and sitting as a liaison between creatives and a client is essentially the same role. But I was looking for a way out of IT, and it was there the whole time, and I just didn't know. Um, I think a lot of times it's that we don't know whatever the, the path is, but definitely the role is very similar. Um, staying under budget, keeping up, like all of, it's the same responsibility. So it's quite interesting because um, I didn't, I didn't see this for me at all. Like y'all remember, I didn't say brand manager um, in the meeting when they asked me. Oh, I guess I'll be on the opposite end. Like this is all really new for me, I'll be honest. Like, <laughs> uh like as a social strategist one thing one thing about me i usually just i stick to a plan but i also don't plan stuff i kind of just like you know i bought a planner uh my senior year of college and i was like i'm definitely going to use this i wrote one thing in there <laughs> and i completely forgot about that plan the entire and the thing i wrote in there was probably like a drawing or something because i was bored like <laughs> You know, so to to change to switch that up and have to learn like, oh yeah, you know, schedule, you know, make a plan. That goes against everything that I am. Like even though I am like a creature of habit, mm -hmm. I don't be I don't be planning stuff. I just be out here just winging it. <laughs> I want to tell the podcast listeners and watchers when Colin says a creature of habit is not a joke. No. This man be really in here with this broccoli yeah. and this chicken bread and this jump rope. Like, Colin is the most disciplined person. <laughs> I don't know. So, that's interesting that you say, like, you're not a planner. You you definitely are a creature of habit. Like, you live in structure and you thrive in it. Exactly. It's, I guess that is something else that isn't on my resume because, again, that discipline, like, when I got here, 
I was in my mind, I was like, dang, you ain't gonna be able to get no type of workout in. You ain't gonna, you're gonna be slipping on, you know, brushing your teeth at night. You've been doing good all year, brushing your teeth at night. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. So, brushing your teeth at night. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the last year, last year. <laughs> you were doing good all 2020, 2021. So, but when I got here, and that's what I really realized. That's what I really realized. Like, I was like, yeah, I realized, like, oh, shoot, I'm still doing the same thing because I know, like, what I like. I know, like, how I like to present myself, and I know just what I don't want. So, you know, I don't want to be out here, you know skinny with a beer belly or anything like that. So I got to jump rope. I got to make sure I eat my broccoli. I got to make sure I drink my water. So skinny yeah. With a beer belly. yeah, that's like, no offense to anybody who's skinny with a beer belly, but like, <laughs> that ain't my life. But, <laughs> that's not my portion. Exactly. But going back to what you said about our positions, it does align with me, but it doesn't fully align with me, but it has taught me that planning in advance and have like an actual structured, written down uh, plan in your schedule can make life a lot easier. Will I incorporate that in my personal life? Who knows? Only God knows. <laughs> so we gonna see after this, but yeah, that's kind of like what I've gotten from my position. I was talk about how Strong's was built for this. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Strong. Yeah. I was going to start it off like that too. I'm built for this. Um, <laughs> okay. Because at, thir at 13 years old, I got my first check as a creative. Mm -hmm. um, I submitted an artwork to the Chicago Skyway for my artwork to be uh, placed in their calendar. And that's sent out to like all of Chicago, whatever part of Chicago. Um, and I was chosen for the month of December, the month I was actually born. Um, so that, I don't know, I just feel like whether it's an art director, an advertiser, and just an artist in general, I know that I'm built for this mm -hmm. from the beginning. Um, and I guess I'm still trying to figure that out. But I know, it, you know, like I said, since 13, submitted to that competition, I knew I was going to get in, but it was just like, didn't know it would bring me right here in Dallas, being an art director, working along other creatives. How about? <laughs> I think for me, like, I was always somebody who was like, very drawn to like, advertising and marketing but I just didn't know how to get there in a sense I think um, I've always been writing as well and whenever like a campaign comes out I'm looking at the copy and how it looks and I'm always like drawn to headlines and things that really pop and how they make you feel while you read them so I was just like wow that's really something I really might want to do one day and that's why like I jumped into like sports marketing and then working in sports I was just like wow this is very aligned but I really knew that I wanted to do more hands-on work so like being here as a copywriter I feel like everything is like full circle <laughs> Mm -hmm. Can you rephrase the question for me? <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. I was actually about to switch up the question. Um, I was about to switch up the question, but no. Um, the question was, um, what is something that has that that has prepared you for this role that you didn't think that would prepare you for this role? Maybe. Uh, so okay. So me being the brand strategist, uh, anything that prepared me for that role. Uh, Yes and no. I mean, it kind of comes in the territory, like, you know, you just keep evolving in life and, you know, just getting to the next step. And for me, that was the reason why I chose the Mercury's Grand Project as a participant. I believe that's what we all did. You know, we want to get to that stepping stone to help, you know, get us more polished in a sense. Like, not saying we never had the char characteristics coming in. And this is how I told them guys yesterday during, um, like, a Zoom call meeting we had. Like, you know, I feel like all of us are limitless. Like, you know, we already knew what strengths we came in, what improvements we wanted to work on, but I feel like we all discovered even more by getting here. So, um, I don't mean to sound kind of vague by responding like that, but for me, like I said, it take, it's a bit of, bit of both. You know, like I was prepared, at the same time I wasn't. All in all though, you know, just ties it all back in. You were on a Zoom call yesterday, bro? <laughs> mm -hmm. huh? So for me, you know what I'm saying, um, content manager wise, I, I did a definition dive. And the only part of it I feel like I haven't really played too much, uh, well, not played too much, you know what I'm saying, put work in towards would be the blog part of things. Um, even though I've always like, I guess copywritten for myself. Um, Ben's Chili Bowl back at home. Shout out to Ben's Chili Bowl. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You in DC, make sure y'all do that. Um, but 
yeah, like for me, like as far as having content and like always want to do something with it, uh, seeing things on television, you know what I'm saying, that intrigue my interest um, in ways of creativeness, you know what I'm saying, like what would I have done with it or um, how would I have put that together? And if it's possible for me to make my own rendition of it, it's always been something that I've done. Being at uh, other GoGo events, because you know I started off from music while I started off in the GoGo community. GoGo is a heavily culturized DC thing. Yeah. Don't let nobody tell you otherwise, okay? <laughs> that stuff is it, from DC. Content-wise, bro, it's always been something that's been a part of me, you know, whether it has been music content, video content, or just an overall creative content in general. Like, it's always been something that, and so managing it, yeah, like I said, it's always been a part of the process of everything. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's always been a part yeah. of it. It's just here, it's just a different level. You know what I'm saying? It's a higher magnitude mm -hmm. of how much managing, because it's not just about me, it's not just about this person. It's not, because it's really including Nova Tool, then we separate Nova Tool, it's including one eighth. You know what I'm saying? Then we got GMC, then we got whatever comes along with it. You know what I'm saying? So it's a little different. Adding um, adding this story together with so many people, yeah. you get what I'm saying. It's just a little different, but it's not. It's more um, exciting, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying, the anxious and being able to do it than it is like, oh man, I, I, I do not want to do this. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like that's what it is for me. Yeah, I know. I'm sent y'all a text when we got our roles. You feel me? Like. <laughs> not really knowing if I was going to be able to attack it. But then you get deep into the vibes of, you know, what's what's uh, required of your position. You realize, like, I spent years, you know, paying attention to detail. And, you know, I spent years trying to keep myself held to creative timelines and whatnot. And so it's just realizing how I work with myself and using that to help the team. That's more prepared than I thought I was. I'm sure we all were. Well, my last question is, um, what's not on your resume that you want to be there in the future? Mm -hmm. uh, I think I got an easy answer. <laughs> 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 yeah, well, uh, I, mean, I, I got to give myself some, you know, some credit, man. You know, being this handsome and you know, talented and everything like that. You know, I got to help from Halle Berry herself. You know, I don't really brag about that too much. You know, we got to get our details. You know. <laughs> to allow everybody else to you know truly be themselves mm -hmm. and with the structure of just how like you know sports and everything like you know everything's like politics nowadays and like and as fun as that would be I feel like that's not ideal for me mm -hmm. now a dream job of mine that I want to add to my resume if anything uh, I mean I don't really have a specific brand or company but I just know I want to do anything and everything related to like pop culture as far as like mm -hmm. fashion sports music film anything that can help me you know help create content to get it out there. I mean, you know. VP uh, the mogul. Right, yeah, exactly. I'm, the mogul. Yeah, yeah, like, like I mentioned to y'all before, I'm a superstar in the making. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. just simply put, like, you know, I'm versatile and you can't put a limit on me. So I want to do everything with that. And on top of that, just want to work more towards the uh, cannabis side of things too. As I mentioned before, if those who haven't heard about it, um, you know, I'm an advocate that wants to, you know, help, you know, with promote alternative health benefits, uh, create job opportunities, um, criminal justice reform, everything of that nature, because I really feel like, you know, that's my dream job, just helping others and just help putting smiles on faces. 
I feel like those avenues for me and those uh, channels will help me get to that point. But yeah, no really dream, position, brand. I'm a free agent. <laughs> but yeah, to that, you know. You said reach out, that's what you said. Yeah. <laughs> it's drafted. It's drafted. <laughs> yeah. How you feeling about that, Colin? I was about to say, BP, I'm glad your experience with Halle Berry was a hell of a lot better than my experience with Keisha Cole. <laughs> Keisha Cole, I'm like Keisha Cole, she wanted me like three feet away in that picture, like, and, and I was 15. I'm like, I can't even name any of your songs. She was, so she was out here social distancing for exactly, yeah. Like, I, I'll show you the picture where it seemed like, yeah, Keisha was gonna call security on me if I got any step closer. But uh, yeah, Keisha Cole and Halle Berry are two different levels. You know, never mind. But uh, the point is, uh, the point is. Uh, Something that I uh, really like to put on my resume, it's, it's crazy, like since being here, I realized that I really do love radio and the television and film industry. Even though we haven't, we haven't done nothing for, for those things, but like I like the, I, well we have done a couple things, but I like the aspect of, you know, the personality or the yeah. um, copy, write the scripts or the um, copywriter. And I feel like if I could like get in a position where I could be around individuals that do that, I could really find like that true passion and it just gives me like that spark, like, yo, I'm ready to go. And and it's not nothing to say about uh, what we're doing now, because I do love the work we're doing now, but I do see like, how we always talk about lean in. I found that like that's more where I'm leaning. And I feel that if I could just get something around that area, it would really be a big deal to me and feel like a personal accomplishment or my own area. Cause it's just like, I grew up loving movies, watching mm -hmm. TV, listening to Tom's Warner Morning Show, going to school, now I'm listening to Steve Harvey Morning Show for the R&B and the Breakfast Club for the pop culture. So something along like that entertainment industry is just calling me. And you, yeah, like that, like that, something about that industry is just where I see myself being at. And hopefully I'll get there, but- I, I see you going there. Definitely. I believe yeah. that, is, that is where you go. I, I appreciate that. Dude. I'm like, you know, you know, I build up my self confidence so much, but <laughs> but yeah. So that's something I would want to put on my resume, and also I want to learn like karate or something like that, and just okay. kind of you know square up with Jackie Chan or something. That's dope. Rush Hour Five. Yeah, Rush Hour Five. <laughs> I can play Chris Tucker's son. Hey, 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 that, hey, 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 h
creative strategies, brand strategies, definitely some awards um, in the next few years. But yeah, the producer credit byline, that's what I'm looking for. I agree. Two more bylaws for me. I've taken a break from writing. Um, I guess more, more so with clients, but more bylines this year. And then I also want to like really work in fashion, um, doing campaigns maybe with like Nike, Adidas, streetwear. I really want to tap into that industry, and I haven't really had a chance to do that yet. Yeah, I'm excited. Shout out to Yellow Brick. We are very open to sponsorships and scholarships. Yeah. <laughs> I got a scholarship from Yellow Brick. I want one for the street. <laughs> I, want I got to a add scholarship that to my resume. for Yellow Brick for the um for the streetwear design oh. aspect of things. Yeah, so I mean that's something that I definitely want to lean more into. Um, I am going to creative direct the cover of Vogue. I don't know when, but I am going to do that. Um, plenty of times. It's just twelve months out of a year. I'm probably going to do. I mean, like ten of them. I don't know when, but it's going to happen. Um, definitely going to be an EGOT. I'm going to have an Emmy, a Grammy, an Oscar, and a Tony. Don't know when, but it's going to happen. And yeah, I think that's an, I'm going to have my own clothing line. I think I want that to be definitely on my resume that I work with brands like Fenty, Fendi, Louis Vuitton, and Chanel. Mm -hmm. And Hanifa. Hanifa. <laughs> I got to work with my girl, Hanifa. Hanifa, we are open to being dressed by you for these awards. <laughs> you know? We don't know when we get any awards, but they're on the way. They BP the already practices speech, so <laughs> oh, yeah. it's on the way. Yeah, let's get it. Um, yeah, I don't handpick my blessings, man. And that's why mm. I stay blessed. So I just want to continue doing high-level work. Any way it's given to me, any way it's placed in front of me. Yeah. I'm saying for me it's just I know when I'm going to accomplish everything I put my mind to, no matter how long it takes me. You know, this path is a path for me, you know, just like all of our paths that I pass by. You know, so right on, my receive what I am gonna receive, mm -hmm. you know, and just keep going into everything that is yet to come. But just come. Say that's a good message to close up. Right, yes. we wrap that up. We hope y'all feel inspired. Well, check out, check out, yeah. Love check yeah. out time. Check out time. I definitely feel inspired. I feel like I've said some stuff that I haven't said um, publicly that I always like keep in private or afraid to say or afraid to affirm. Um, so definitely, after I've like said it. I remember when I first started saying that, like, yo, I'm a gospel pop star. At first, I was just like, why are you saying that? But it felt like, it was just like, like yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Right. but it felt like, yo, I, that's what I am. Exactly. Like, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? It's just like, like, like it's to, to say it is to own it. Like, you know what I'm saying? To say it is to, is to speak it and to affirm it and to speak life into it. So, like, that's what I just, I mean, you know, I just did that in front of y'all. <laughs> And I only said that in, in the in the confines of my room. Like, you know what I'm saying? Some only my closest friends I just said that to. So I feel like me saying it to, to the world is also saying like I'm done with the fear aspect of, oh, I don't want to go after it or I don't. Like, no, nah, that's what I want. That's what I want. I feel like I'm destined for it. Yeah. So that's where I, I feel destined. Mm. I'm serious. Yeah, I feel like this was a time capsule of like, mm -hmm. when we look back at it, when it does happen, it's gonna be like, damn, we already said it. Mm -hmm. um, it's been written, now we just gotta live it. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like clarity. Ooh. Like, yeah, I feel like, <laughs> yeah, like, you know, I'm just seeing things a little bit clearly now, and I just know, kind of know what direction that I need to go. I would say I'm feeling aligned. I feel like everything is we're here to do what we're doing. And everything we want to accomplish is going to get accomplished. So I'm really inspired as well. My word is definitely inspired. Um, I feel like this is very much like those tweets, like what um, Straws is saying, everybody's tweeting about what they're gonna do in 10 years, and they're gonna get this Oscar, and they're gonna get these things. I love the idea of a time capsule. Um, and I would encourage our listeners, make a time capsule. Like, Record it, write it down um, so that you have it, so you can say, like, told y'all. <laughs> we knew. It was destined. It was written. All of that.
My check out work is reminiscent. Uh, reminiscent that I had a big hug. <laughs> <laughs> Outside of that, though, you know, just reminiscent of just like, like we all just talked about, like, you know, our journey in life, like what got us to this point, you know, the good, the bad, like, it's just that word reminiscent just help, helps remind me, like, you know, of why we're here, why we, you know, all like how we all feel destined to be here and get, get everything accomplished and continue on to thrive, strive. So I feel like that, that's my word check out. I'm feeling forward and onward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, that's beautiful. Pretty, pretty summarized right there, I feel like, you know, just forward and onward, man. Feeling primed, ready to go. All right, well, well thank you guys for listening to Patron Diddles. Add it up till we got to the sum. Stayed in the rhythm, now we on the drum. Know the mentality, you see how we coming. Real talk on it, we keep it a hundred dreams. Money can't buy, that's all that we wanted. Wait, now we see what we needed. Putting that work to this mission completed. We feel the blessed, though we was depleted. Real life winners, we can't be defeated. Stay by our side like we on the drum line. Boy, know that things gon' be our sometimes. It's a new day, check the forecast. Wait, perfect day for the drum podcast. Yes.